Right, this series is for those new to the world of 3D printing. Basically, what I'm gonna address in this series is basically the fundamentals, the 101 fundamentals. What is 3D printing? The basics of what you need to know and uh, how to set up Blender for 3D printing, which we'll deal with at the very last point. So if you kind of know roughly what you what a 3D printing, what 3D printing is and etc. You might want to skip uh, the initial parts of this tutorial and just go to the end of how to set up Blender for 3D printing. I'll put a timestamp below so you can just skip to that. So basically, let's talk about 3D printing, what it is. Basically, 3D printing is kind of, a, it's been around for a while, but it's now becoming more and more accessible. And what you can do with 3D printing is you can basically print um, using uh, materials like plastic and even nowadays you can use exotic materials like a uh, wood filament and uh, we'll talk about that later about different materials etc so let's deal with the very very basics on on 3d printer what you're going to need to get started well first of all you're going to need a bit of dough you're going to need cash nowadays you can get a, a relatively cheap 3d printer like the one i've got there which is an artillery I paid £350 for this one. I think it's £350. I'll, I'll double check, but it was around £350 on eBay, brand new. So if you're in the US, I think you can pick them up a bit cheaper. This is a large format printer, so I can print 300, 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters. So I would strong, I, I really recommend the artillery side one. They did, it came. It wasn't, it wasn't that hard for me to set up. You do need a little bit of um, technical know-how to set up a 3D printer, but it wasn't that challenging for me to do. So there's, there's, there's that. Obviously, there's lots of 3D printers out there, different types, etc. Just do a bit of uh, research and due diligence before you jump into getting a 3D printer. Okay, let's talk about materials. The, what they basically call it filaments. Now you can buy a roll of filament on eBay or Amazon from anything from around uh, 10 US dollars to 50 US dollars. Now you've got all different types of um, filament out there. You've got PLA, you've got ABS, you've got PETG, you've got Ninja Flex, you've got other wood filament, you've got all different ones out there it may sound a bit confusing but it's really not it's basically just like paper i mean if you was gonna you know you you if you're gonna print on a, a normal printer you use the right paper for the particular job you're doing whether it's photographic paper normal standard letter paper or cardboard or whatever is that the same printing you find the right filament for the job you're trying to do now let's talk about the the free i'm not going to go into every single printing material out there because otherwise it would be all air all day and I don't, to be quite honest, I don't know about every single printer, uh, filament out there, printer filament out there. So I'm going to just talk about the, the three main types which are PLA, PETG and ABS and I'm going to talk about what they are used for. Now PLA is the most common and the most vastly used uh, material out there basically it's a easy to easy to print with material however the drawbacks from PLA is not very robust P ABS material is harder to print with and it also gives off fumes and it's just basically harder to print with that's what I said so you got that and then you got the middle time just imagine ABS and PLA had a love child. The love child would be called PETG, which is in between the both. It's easier to print with. It's a lot more robust than a, uh, a um, than PLA, but it's not as robust as ABS. However, there's arguments saying that PETG is more uh, is 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 just as good as ABS. I'm not going to go into into it. So I don't know enough about it. 
But what I will say is I personally use PETG. Now, when we talk about robust, when I say robust, I mean PETG won't won't melt if you if it's exposed to direct sunlight or if it's if it's used daily for strength. So, so for example, you got to figure out if I'm going to use um, PETG, I'll be using it for something. Say, for example, I'm making parts for an e-bike or something that you're going to hang outside or you're going to be using to put stresses under. So PETG for me is the way forward for anything robust. Okay, so that's obviously you got you got as I say you got exotic materials like nylon, carbon, and all other stuff. Just do a bit of research on what you're trying to what you want to use your material for. Okay, let's talk about software, what you're gonna to need to get started. Now you're gonna need two pieces of software to get started. You're gonna need your modeling software. I use Blender. Obviously there's the other different modeling software you can use such as Fusion uh, 3D, Autodesk Fusion, or you could use SketchUp or 3ds Max. There's other modeling design software you can use. And you're also gonna use a slicer. Now a slicer software is basically something that you can, you would use to preview your, your 3D model and set up your um, 3D model so it basically plays nicely with your 3D printer. You can't just use Blender to create your model and then print directly from Blender, it doesn't work like that. You've got to use a program, another program called a slicer. Now the slicer software is, I'm only going to talk about the two main ones out there. Now you've got which a lot of people are using is you've got Simplify 3D which is a paid bit of kit and you've got Cura. Now Cura is the one I use and that's the one we're going to be covering in this on this channel. Um, Cura is free um, and I really like it. it. Now don't get overwhelmed with with it when, you, when you're dealing with uh, uh, these slices and that. Like with anything, you go, oh, it just seems so hard and there's all these little things you got. But the more you, do, it's all about, how do you put it? It's about consistency. The more you do it, the easier it gets. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or anything like that to get into 3D printing. It's not like, you know, some dark arts. It's just a matter of being a bit consistent and playing with it and not expecting great results straight away. It's just like, you know, Buy your printer and expect to foul a lot when, when you're getting into it. I've gone slightly off a tangent, but as I said, what you need is your design software, which I use Blender, and your slicer software, and I use Cure. So you're going to need those two things, first and foremost, and they will work with you in conjunction with your 3D printer. Okay, so I'm gonna sound like a, a bloody activist now and a, like your dad or something like that, or you, I don't know, some, a teacher that you probably don't like. But I'm gonna throw out a, 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 a controversial topic here. I see a lot of people printing stuff. With their, they get a 3D printer and they go, oh, I'm gonna print something, and they print some, I don't know, 3D character or whatever and they just have it there printed and they put it on their, their side and they're happy with it listen this is what I'm saying now is the world's resources are not infinite plastic is is basically clogging up our oceans and even though we say uh, there's some you might be able to buy um, materials that are biodegradable and that they're not totally biodegradable not not totally or well, most of them ain't so think about what you're going to print. I don't want to tell you what if, if you should print, but my suggestion is try and print things that are going to be of some use, not just a kind of, I don't know, some figurine that is not going to be of any use to anyone, that you're going to just stare and you're going to look at it every now and again or whatever. Okay, there, there's rooms for having nice little things around your house, but try and, this is just my view and just my suggestion, is don't waste the plastic. Basically, make something that's going to be of some use to you either financially 
um, even if it's financially, of some use to other people, a practical use for your 3D print, not just something just that's just going to do you printing something for the sake of printing, you know? Okay, that's the rant over with. Okay, so setting up Blender so it plays nicely with your slicer is relatively easy. So first of all, let's just set it up as if you, you're starting from scratch. Let's just go to uh, defaults. Okay, so you're, you're faced with the, uh, the usual default box. So what we wanna do, if you notice, it's, it's set to meters. So basically we wanna set it to millimeters because that's usually the dimensions you want to work with unless you've got a, a massive printer which your chances are you really haven't you just probably got a normal standard printer so the way we go about setting it up is relatively simple first of all we go to this icon here which is our scene setup uh, click on units and at the moment it's on metric that's fine we want it's on meters and that is not so fine so we want to change that to millimeters so just drag it down to millimeters then you want to change this setting to 0 0.001 and if you notice uh, the, the grid disappeared, don't worry about that. Then you go up to this icon here which is your overlay icon, click on there and then what we want to do is just put that to um, 0 0.001 and then the very last thing we want to do is if we click on here and we want to go to sorry click on here the view and just make uh, our end point clipping point add an extra zero on that that just basically allows us to zoom in and out without it disappearing yeah so that's it very simple we've set up our our, our millimeter settings in in blender so next thing we want to do is it's all well and good having your millimeter set up, but what we really want to do now is kind of work in volume so that we set up our printer volume, the kind of rough side of our printer. Now, obviously I've got an artillery sidewinder. You might not have an artillery side, you might have a different dimension in the printer. So, but I'm going to set up a, to, as an example for how I set up my, pre, uh, my, my workflow view. So if I click on the 3D cube, and then if we click off view, on there and then we just go and click on item now this will give us our scale of the item at the moment at the moment it's two millimeters by two millimeters so if we just set up for it to be the exact same size as our 3d printer so our printer is 300 by 300 by 400 and if we scale out that is actually the the volume of my 3d printer so what I want to do is, obviously I can't see through that, so let's just add a empty cube. Let's just turn on that so we can actually see it. And let's scale up our empty cube. Press S to scale. And make it roughly the same size. And then let's just scale it in this uh, Y axis or Z axis in, in blender to make it kind of roughly the same shape and now we can just delete our cube and now we're working with the dimensions of our um, in millimeters okay so we set up our, our volume for our 3d printer obviously your volume might be different than mine so what we want to do now is now we, we're not lost in space we know roughly the dimensions of our, our 3D printer. So if I was to add a, say, I don't know, a model that I wanted to print, say I'm gonna print a cube, I would then basically model a cube or whatever object it is I'm doing. And I can get the, the scale in exactly, kind of roughly the right dimension. So let's just say we wanted to create a skew, say 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. by 100 millimeters and now we've got a, a cube that is you know in that will fit in our our dimensions of our 
our 3D printer. So we were not lost. Okay, so let's export this into Cura. So the way you do this is it's an STL file. So we just simply go to File, Export, STL File, set wherever you're gonna save it to. Let's just go to local disk C, and so desktop instead, and let's just call this um, exporting test. You could just leave all of these settings um, the way they are. Don't have to do anything. And just go export STL. And now if I was to open up Cura now, let's just delete that box. I, I put one in before. And this is just the scene that I've had it already open up. Let's just go file. Open files. Desktop exporting test and bang we've got it in there and that's the scale size of it yeah now I won't go into um, setting up Cura so it shows it artillery etc and uh, I won't I won't go into showing you how to set up the profiles in Cura in this part of the tutorial because it's a little bit time-consuming I'll show you it in the second part of the tutorial. I'll also show you some um, some add-ons that are really useful to use with Blender with, when it comes to 3D printing. All right, guys, I hope this has helped. I'm out, laters.